you said you give a public answer and then if something in public that you can agree upon, meaning that he's in Whittier, California, you can talk about Whittier, California, because that's a public thing. But when you went into Gene's, you know, what do you do for a living? He hadn't revealed that yet. So it was private. Therefore, you skipped the process. So go back to that for a moment, because I think that's pretty profound. Describe this process that you use when you go through, uh, when you evangelize. Well, well, first off with Gene, though, I realized I'd, I'd, I went too fast. Mm -hmm. But it ended up that every Tuesday, Thursday after that, he started sitting with me. Mm. And we started going deeper. And in time, I found out he was a guy who had twice been married, had no clue where his former wives were, had two kids in the world, had no clue where they were. Have you ever heard of a deadbeat dad? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dean was the guy, and guess what? God loves deadbeat dads. And if we're not in context where we can meet those guys to tell them of the love of God, they're, they're, you know, they, they may still hear it. I think God engineered Gene and I meeting. He became a Christian nine months later, but it took time, you know, and, and I had to learn from my mistakes. But Gene was a good teacher in a sense. He hung in there with me. He didn't reject me when I went too fast too soon. But another example would be, I was coming back from Slovakia, as in Bratislava, giving some C.S. Lewis lectures over spring break, and I had to fly back to Wheaton to that classes after spring break. And the people dropped me off at the Vienna airport, which is only about 45 minutes from Bratislava. I check in my luggage, I go through passport control, and I go into the uh, where I was waiting for the gate, the gate area. And I'm told the flight's three hours delayed. I love the anonymity of airports. I pull out a book. I start reading. I see this young woman walking into the gate area. And she's got a clipboard and a lanyard. And she's going up to people. And I can hear her talking in German. Vienna's a German-speaking city. I figure she's doing a survey for the airport. Sure enough, a moment later, she comes up to me. And she speaks some flawless English. And it gave me great insecurity. What was I wearing that gave it away? I wasn't German-speaking. And I realized, though I was reading a book, she probably saw it was in English and spoke to me in that language. She, she said she was doing a survey for the airport. And I said, what's your name? Public question. She said, Allegra. I said, Allegra, are you from Vienna? She said, no, I grew up in Southern Austria. Oh, well, what brought you to Vienna? Public question. She's in Vienna. And she says, I'm a student. So now I've got a billion questions I could ask. Where do you go to school? What are you studying? And you follow that line of questioning all the way through. And then I say, do you have any other family in Southern Austria? Only my father, and he's a very bitter man. Mm. Why is he so bitter, Allegra? She didn't have to tell me that. Uh, well, my mother left him to go with her lover to Canada, but she had good reason to leave him. He's very toxic. And so we could talk about her relationship with her father for a while and find out how that was troubled and difficult. I said, well, do you have any other family members? She says, a brother. Where's he, Allegra? He's also at the University of Vienna. Well, do you have much relationship with him? No, we're kind of estranged too. And then she goes, and it's worse than that. I said, how's that, Allegra? She said, my boyfriend went to Florence to study art for six months and asked me to wait for him. I waited dutifully. He came back yesterday to tell me he met somebody better in Florence. Mm -hmm. Here's a woman whose whole life is full of estrangements, relationship longing, but vacuous as far as the reality. I know how to share the gospel with her. I know the place where when I shoot the arrow, it won't be at hazard aimed. It will be aimed at the target because I could talk with her about the God who wants to reconcile us to us, to him and have a relationship with him because he loves us. So finally, 20 minutes, I've been asking her questions. She hasn't asked me one question. I said, Allegra, and I know her life. I said, Allegra, you need to uh, ask your questions. But I said, but I need you to know I've been sent here to tell you something. Then she thought I was a plant at the airport to see if she was doing her job. I said, no, it has nothing to do with that. So she asked me her questions. How long it take me to check in, get through passport control, all the things you'd expect. And finally, she says, what is it you were sent here to tell me? And I think every one of us needs to realize we are people who are called to Christ and sent into the world. Come and go, Jesus says. Mm. Come unto me, all ye who are weary, laden and, uh, weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Go into the world to make him known. 
So she said, what were you sent here to tell me? I said, Allegra, the God of the universe knows you and he loves you. Allegra, he loves you. Sometimes you have to say it three times for it to fit in. Allegra, he loves you and he won't abandon you. And she just started sobbing in the airport. Loud sobs. Everybody's looking at me as if I'm torturing this poor girl, you know. And, and she says to me, volunteers herself, but I've done so many bad things with my life. I said, oh, Allegra, he knows about every one of them. And so great is his love that he has forgiven you of all of it. And he longs to have a relationship with you. She heard it. She heard it because you, you, you went slow and you listened to her. You asked appropriate questions. And I don't think we take Jesus to anybody. He's already there, more in love with that person than you and I will ever be. We go to make explicit what God might be doing already as he's tugging at their hearts. But we have to listen and we have to ask appropriate questions. We have to go deeper and so on. And, and sometimes you can get along, along in that process and then the person will be dismissive of you, you know. And there's different kinds of ways you ask questions, you know, and different kinds of protocols, I think, for evangelism with friends, say, with acquaintances or cold turkey just going out into the community. But I think if we listen, Lewis helps us there, too, because Lewis is the liberal arts guy. Mm -hmm. A better broad understanding of life and the liberal arts and ideas and so on gives us more connecting places with another person that we might meet. I can give you examples of that too.